now. If I press the forward arrow, it's going to work. Cool beans. All right, so this is uh, our farm, and basically, uh, this is the where the cows are. This is our pot factory over here. This is the digester. This is the lagoon. So um, basically, we have 400 acres. We have 200 acres of forest, uh, 200 acres of cropland, and then we rent another 400 acres. So we're in compliance with our nutrient management plan, uh, which makes it a lot easier to work on a project like this uh, as opposed to when you're uh, behind the eight ball on something like this. Um, this building over here is uh, a manure holding facility, and the deal that we made with NRCS was as long as we don't store any manure where rainwater can see it, we can store our cow pots in there. So right now that building is full, well, it was full of inventory right up until December when we started shipping out. So right now we're shipping about uh, 40 tractor trailer loads out of that facility. So what's the situation? Dairy is very reciprocal. And generally speaking, our operating costs, you can see the three lines, are um, pretty high compared to the cost price that we're getting for our milk. And uh, the total costs, including our uh, taxes and buildings and all the other stuff, makes it so um, operating a dairy farm isn't necessarily a profitable venture. Um, and usually farms find other ways to make money. Some of them make maple syrup. Some of them make compost, some of them work off the farms. Uh, in our case, um, we worked at trying to reduce our inputs. So we do some rotational grazing. Um, we try to use a lot of energy efficient products on our farm, reducing our costs there. We do a lot of recycling. Um, and of course, we have methane digesters, so we're using renewable energies. Uh, and we've diversified uh, with the cow pots being one, but we also have a farm market, bakery, greenhouse operation, which is great for testing our products. Um, so we really have three different businesses that are um, using the farm backdrop as um, just a way of marketing. So the manure from our farm, um, it, it's just standard, 100 pounds per cow is probably a good average. Um, we have the methane. We use the separated uh, liquids for fertilizer. All of the solids are used for bedding and the cow pot production. So the bedding recycles and keeps coming through. Um, and then everything else is being put into a cow pot. When the cows are out to pasture, we actually have a co-op of farms in our areas. That is uh, the Kena Valley Agriculture Co-op whose main mission is to deal with uh, neighbors in a more friendly manner. So our goal is to be good neighbors and try to uh, actually be wanted by our neighbors rather than wanting to be thrown out of the uh, neighborhood. So we've done pretty well on that. Uh, we actually had our town um, um, Every year they have a uh, town report and they dedicated it to the dairy farms a couple of years back. And it was mostly because we were proactive in trying to be better neighbors. So this is the heart of our manure system. Uh, the methane digester, that's actually an older picture. Uh, that's the third cover that we put on the digester since 1997, and we have a fourth one that's on it now, which is a flat cover, and it's actually made of plywood and a, a Ravon uh, scrim, which is a plastic, six mil uh, uh, plastic. Um, and it does actually work, uh, and the reason that we've gone that route is that this uh, structure that you see there was actually a greenhouse, a stainless aluminum structure, and it was falling apart, it wasn't holding up. Um, the hydrogen sulfide is, is pretty aggressive. Even though aluminum and stainless, you wouldn't think that would be a problem, it started eating up the aluminum. Um, so we went to a plywood that uh, is a flat cover with, with ribbing, 
that we can pull off. We actually, this is a plug flow digester, uh, and we have to clean it annually to be able to run it. So there's some real design flaws with this. Uh, like I say, it was built in 1997. Um, and we've made four major modifications. The original budget on this digester was $85,000. I would say that uh, we probably have a half million dollars invested in this thing. Um, there is absolutely no payback on this digester uh, other than <clears throat> we've been able to build a value-added product of the cowpox, which uh, obviously are profitable, otherwise I wouldn't be here today. Uh, the separator room, it's the same technology you guys have seen. It's a screw press, uh, and we get about 12 yards of fiber a day. We uh, do use a blower to get rid of some of the moisture, so we, we actually blow it into the composter. It's an in-vessel composter that I built with uh, rural development funding, um, and it's just an old molasses tank that I put on a trunnion. Um, and that makes the compost that we use for bedding for the cows. We don't like the green uh, bedding, which is fresh off the separator. Uh, we prefer to compost it first, um, and that works very well for us. We run about 35% dry matter on that material, which makes it pretty fluffy. So, turning the cow pies into cow pox. Um, we run with, had a number of different grants. It's probably about $2 million worth of grants that we uh, collected over the years. The first one was a $700 grant from SARA, which is Sustainable Agriculture Research Initiative. Um, and then we did some work with the Department of Environmental Protection, uh, Energy and Environmental Protection in the state of Connecticut. Um, the Department of Ag had some monies available to us. Uh, NRCS, of course, equipped money. Um, rural development put in quite a bit of money. We did uh, a patent grant, and we did a business plan, and we've done uh, the invested compost. So we had a number of grants from them, and then we did a couple of US, uh, USDA SBIR grants. Uh, we had a phase one and a phase two grant, um, and we were looking at uh, being able to take that uh, digester and using that energy to do the whole job, create the feedstock plus the energy to make the product, um, which is actually uh, feasible. So this is a picture of the, the product. Uh, we have great root penetration. Um, so we have, it's a much coarser fiber than a peat, um, and we get very, very good root penetration that it's basically invisible to the plant. So it's, it's uh, we think it's a proven winner. We've done a lot of research uh, with different universities. We've worked with uh, USDA down in Beltsville, Cornell, North Carolina State, um, UConn, um, and we basically uh, have got research from their stuff at the universities that shows that we get about 6% more fruit set and we can gain up to 10 to 14 days maturity rate so we can mature faster, which is really important if you're selling uh, vegetables to get first in the market is, is a truly a, uh, an asset to you. Um, the benefits for from a cow pot as opposed to my competitor, which be, would be a pea pot or a fertile pot, which is made from spruce, um, we have better root penetration, um, and then of course with any of the biodegradables, getting that air pruning is better than in a plastic pot where you get uh, root boundness. Uh, we get a three month uh, life within the greenhouse, so 12 weeks, and higher with the heavier products, the uh, 5, 6, and up to 17 inch pots, we can actually get 16 to 20 weeks. Um, with our particular product, which um, the pea pots actually advertise on when they sell their plants, Bonnie sells plants in, in a jiffy pot, they uh, ask for them to be torn or cut to plant them. In our case, that's not necessary. So the convenience to the consumer is a little bit better with our product. Um, and of course, you don't get any plastic waste. Um, there was some studies done by um, uh, a, a couple of different groups that 
when you're not dealing with the plastic, you can actually, the labor savings can be up to 60% labor savings because you're not pulling the plant out of the plastic and you don't have to go back and pick up the plastic and then recycle it. So um, it's peat free, that's a big deal, uh, especially in Europe. Uh, we do have a uh, uh, health certificate so we can sell this to the EU. And in England, uh, peat is actually a real problem. So this product we've actually shipped a couple of container loads over there and we're testing the markets over there. It's obviously 100% renewable. There's no mining of the peat, um, which is pretty good. Uh, American made obviously works best in America, but um, it does add flavor to it. We're the only company biodegradable that is made in America, and that helps us in that market. Um, and there's no waste stream to the facility, so that was very important to us. We had two major goals. One is don't change the management of the dairy, so we can back this, uh, this process up to any dairy farm that's within reason of a management similar to ours, and there's no waste stream on the facility, so getting permitting is quite easy. We can make any, uh, there's some out on the table, you can see the sizes that we can make. Uh, we can make specialty products. Uh, we have, uh, we can get very detailed in how we can uh, form the product. For instance, this corner has a couple of, of uh, uh, embossed pieces on the inside that fits a particular item. So we can do a lot of different things with pole molding uh, to make it very fine. The other product that's not on here is this is a uh, paper product. Um, this is made with recycled cardboard uh, and dairy fibers. We can, uh, we've used this for a rolling mulch. There's 73 million acres in the United States of things that are grown on plastic. This actually works. This is the testing that we did at USDA Beltsville where we uh, grew tomatoes on that and it holds up until you get the canopy and then it just, you till it into the ground. So the advantage to that is it costs more initially to lay it out on the ground, but the uh, labor required to pick the plastic back up and the amount of uh, plastic that's left in the environment is just a real problem <coughs> for growers. And this product, it just tills into the ground and just adds to the soil. Uh, we just recently, we, we've been on this for quite a while, we've had a number of uh, different universities do different testing, um, so we're constantly trying to throw the product at the universities for the testing, and we've had some very good results um, where we're degraded so much better than what I talked about before, um, but this is this particular paper just came out uh, last week. So we're kind of excited about that. Uh, so we were very fortunate to um, get involved with this guy. Uh, we did a Dirty Jobs episode on Discovery Channel. Um, and when that show aired, it crashed the website. Um, we had the, the initial show and then he's shown it at least a uh, hundred times since then on repeats. Every time it shows on TV, we get this big blip and we get calls from all over the world and plays in 134 countries. Um, so it's really kind of interesting to this day when it repeats, we still get, uh, we'll get a half dozen calls from around the world. Um, that, that one show was probably worth a million dollars to us. Since then, uh, we did a show with him, The Larry King Show, which is on CNN. And this is a guy that goes all over the world as well, but that was just a little tiny blip. So it's just interesting that the, the difference between a talking head and a guy that's out there working with people, uh, we just got a really big response with him. Uh, since then, we've also had the pleasure of doing the Martha Stewart thing. Uh, we've done the Today Show. So, getting those, once you start with a guy like him, it really blossoms. So, it's been very exciting. And I can tell you that he's a, truly a gentleman. 
um, and a, a really nice guy to work with. So he did this little um, piece at the end of the show that was kind of cool. And I'm yeah, yeah. Doesn't need to stink a little. Doesn't need to stink a little. Because that's, that's amazing. So somebody home could put their uh, petunias in it and then plant the whole thing out in the garden. Plant it out in the garden and it disappears. And it adds nutrients to your soils. Makes the plant grow bigger, faster, stronger. But the reason it's a cow pot, what? This cow gives us everything. She gives us the feedstock, she gives us the energy, and the incentive to go forward and do this. You love the cow, don't you? Love the cow. I love the cow, too. You gotta give her credit. You really do. Here's the cow. This pot's for you. So he, he really was an amazing guy. Um, and just this past summer, he invited me to go down and do a show with him in Washington where we uh, had the, he's got this uh, nonprofit organization working where he's trying to um, get people to understand that not only do you have to, uh, there's more to a job than just working. You gotta get educated, of course, but you also have to work hard. So um, he's really one of those guys that's down in the trenches. So the some of the questions that were asked uh, about this, we. Are, this is kind of how we uh, progressed. Uh, we started out very slow. We're very conservative folk. Uh, we don't have a really uh, a marketing team. Uh, so we actually started out by uh, walking into a store next door, you know, our local hardware store, and started pushing them out that way, uh, phone calls. So we were doing all the marketing. Um, and we slowly built up some uh, Clients, the, the real cool thing is that when we do get a client, a, a retailer, we get repeat business. We very rarely lose somebody that started with our product, they sell pretty well. And then uh, 2012, we got a, a fair size order that got us up to about, uh, well, close to 10 million pots. Um, and then that order didn't come in the next season because they screwed up on their marketing. Uh, which is where this graph goes to. But then this season, December, uh, we did get a, another order for 20 million pieces of this particular product uh, with uh, hopefully um, this, they haven't let us know. They'll let us know in May, but uh, they'll probably double that order again in May. So we're putting together some automation and we're working very hard to be able to fill that order. We're working right now with 30 people in the pop factory, um, 24, six and a half, um, and we're putting in the automation so we can be a little more efficient on that, uh, and we'll probably expand with the second product line. We will, at that point, uh, look for probably uh, next year or the year after, we'll look for a farm to work with, uh, probably in the middle of the country and try to uh, expand out the production capabilities at that, at, at that time. So, any questions? Yes? Is there any concern that your cows aren't organic? Uh, yeah, we get, we get a lot of that, um, and we are at this point not on the listed, uh, and I don't think we can be on the listed. Uh, we are certified for organic use by the certifiers. Uh, so we have, I think, 10 different certifiers around the country. The Boston certifiers out here in Oregon, uh, Ohio, New York, all over the country in different spots. And the way it works is the farmer wants to use our product. He goes to his certifier. We give the certifier all of our production mythology and how we make the product and the ingredients, and then they make a judgment.